everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Folks, I'm not going to lie to you, I am not excited for what will be happening this coming Friday. Because not only do I feel like it's going to ruin my childhood, but it's also directed by the guy who ruined one of my favorite musicals. So, I think I'm going to need a breather before we get there. So, for this episode, why don't we look back at a really old Disney movie from the 40s, which focuses on a young deer prince. Released on August 21st, 1942, the movie is Bambi. So, let's get started. In this story... A young fawn named Bambi joins his new friends, a young rabbit named Thumper, and a skunk named Flower, in happily exploring the woods. Bambi is captivated with a young doe named Feline, and he learns from his doting mother and his father, the great prince of the forest, that besides the delights of the forest, there is danger in open meadows where hunters can see them. Though fear and tragedy touch Bambi's life, Another spring brings renewal. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, this was a very emotional Disney film. And since I grew up with this movie, I still love it. But, in order to explain why, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The movie is based on the book, Bambi, A Life in the Woods, by Austrian author Felix Sultan. In 1933, Sidney Franklin, a producer and director at MGM, purchased the film rights to the original book, intending to adapt it as a live-action film. After years of experimentation, he eventually decided that it would be too difficult to make such a film, and he sold the film rights to Walt Disney in April 1937. Disney began work on crafting an animated adaptation immediately, intending it to be the company's second feature-length animated film, and their first to be based on a specific recent work. However, the original novel was written for an adult audience, and was considered too grim and somber for a regular, light-hearted Disney film. The artists also discovered that it would be challenging to animate deer realistically. These difficulties resulted in Disney putting production on hold, while the studio worked on several other projects. In 1938, Disney assigned Purse Pierce and Carl Falberg to work on the film's storyboards. But attention was soon drawn away as the studio began working on Fantasia. Finally, on August 17, 1939, production on Bambi began in earnest, but progressed slowly owing to changes in the studio personnel and location of handling animation at the time. Although the animators had animated Deer in Snow White, they were animated, in the words of Eric Larson, like big flower sacks. Disney wanted the animals in Bambi to be more realistic and expressive than, than those in Snow White. He had Rico Lebrun, a painter of animals, come and lecture to the animators on the structure and movement of animals. The animators visited the Los Angeles Zoo, and Disney set up a small zoo at the studio with animals such as rabbits, ducks, owls, and skunks and a pair of fawns named Bambi and Feline so that the artist can see firsthand the movement of these animals. Rico Lebrun's sketches depicted realistic animals, but as characters, they lacked personality. Mark Davis created the final design of Bambi by incorporating Lebrun's realistic study of deer anatomy, but exaggerating the character's faces by making his proportions baby-like, with a, a short snout, big eyes, etc. 
Although there were no humans in Bambi, live-action footage of humans was used for one scene. Actress Jane Randolph and Donna Atwood acted as live-action references for the scene where Bambi and Thumper are on an icy pond, which was one of my favorite scenes. The animators learned a lot about animals during the film's production, giving them a broader spectrum of animation styles to use in future projects. The backgrounds for the film were inspired by the Eastern American woodlands. One of the earliest and best-known artists for the Disney studio, Maurice J. Day, spent several weeks in the Vermont and Maine forests, sketching and photographing deer, fawns, and the surrounding wilderness areas. However, his first sketches were too busy as the eye did not know where to focus. Tyrus Wong, a Chinese animator, showed Day some of his impressionistic paintings of a forest. Day liked the paintings and appointed him as art director of the movie. Wong's backgrounds were revolutionary since they had more detail around the center and less around the edges thus leading a viewer's eye to the characters. <sighs> Unfortunately, due to World War II, which began in Europe in 1939, films like Pinocchio and Fantasia failed at the box office. Facing financial difficulty, Disney was forced to cut 12 minutes from the film before final animation to save production costs. Now, in my eyes, the animation in this movie is very beautiful, with how they captured the animals and the scenery around them. Plus, the seasons in the forest look very beautiful, although sometimes the winter scenes look a bit gloomy. And in my opinion, it's very intense with the fiery climax at the end. Now, other than the ice skating scene, and the fire at the end of the movie, there are scenes that are very memorable, like when Bambi plays with his friends, when he's in a daydream after Feline kisses him, and when he battles Rano. Also, the parts where men attack the forest is very bone-chilling, even though they don't show themselves on screen. And of course, the part where Feline gets attacked by dogs. To me, these dogs look very ferocious. I mean, just look at them. They made me think back to a time when I was bitten by a dog when I was three years old. Also, there are a few scenes in this movie that were later used for the rescuers. But the weirdest part of the movie is when Flower and Thumper get Twitterpated. Now here's where we come to the music and songs. In total, there are four songs in this movie. The first song is Love is a Song, sung by a famous singer at the time, Donald Novus, during the opening credits. In my opinion, this is a very beautiful song, and it's, it's very tear-jerking. Plus, it gets a powerful reprise at the end of the movie. Next is April Showers, which is sung while Bambi and his mother settle down and witness the rain just before the night storm. To me, this song starts out very cute, but when the storm happens, the music becomes epic and powerful. Then there's Let's Sing a Gay Little Spring Song, which is sung by a flock of birds during the second half of the movie. To me, while Owl doesn't like this song, I find this song to be a really sweet song to listen to when spring comes. Also, just recently, my mom told me that this song makes her think of the Dream Ballet from Oklahoma. Not surprising since both this movie and the stage musical were made during the same decade. Finally, 
there's the movie's love song, Looking for Romance, or I Bring You a Song, sung by Donald Novus, while Bambi and Feline are together in a meadow after Rano's defeat. In my opinion, while this isn't my favorite love song in Disney history, and it is similar to Can You Feel the Love Tonight from The Lion King, it's still very powerful, and the visuals of Bambi and Feline running through the meadow is very adorable. Also, there is one part of the song that would later be used in Mickey and the Beanstalk. Anyway, now that we're done with Mustang notes, animation, and songs, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. Let's start with our main character, Bambi. As a young fawn, he's voiced by three actors, Bobby Stewart, Donnie Dunnigan, and Hardy Albright. In my opinion, Bambi has a curious nature and a good cute voice. Also, he is pretty handy as a summoned ally in Kingdom Hearts. But when he's an adult, voiced by John Sutherland, not only does he look handsome, but he's also very brave and strong, like when he rescued Feline from the dogs. Next up, we have Bambi's best friend, Thumper, voiced by Peter Ben, Tim Davis, and Sam Edwards, whom I remember from the 1969 movie version of Hello, Dolly. <sighs> Man, that brings back warm memories of when I received the Dolly Levi Award back in fall 2015. Anyway, I love Thumper, because he's very comical and mischievous, especially when he thumps his foot on the ground. And I like the scenes where Thumper takes Bambi under his wings and teaching him the ways of the forest to some extent. Also, there are parts where Thumper repeats what his father told him, which is, in my opinion, very nostalgic, but also educational at times. Next, we have Flower, a striped skunk voiced by Stan Alexander, Tim Davis, and Sterling Holloway. Best known from Dumbo, The Three Caballeros, The Aristocats, Alice in Wonderland, The Many Avengers of Winnie the Pooh, and The Jungle Book. To me, Flower is a really adorable skunk, and I'm surprised that he doesn't stink in this film like most skunks. Also, I think Flower can be pretty bashful, and he can be sleepy, like during the winter scene. Bambi's mother is voiced by radio and television actress Paula Winslow. who got to be in North by Northwest. To me, she's very loving, kind, wise, patient, and very protective. She is often teaching Bambi about the forest and warning him of the dangers of man. Speaking of which, the part where she got shot, though off screen, was the saddest part of the movie. Next, we have Friend Owl, voiced by Will Wright, who got to be in Rodgers and Hammerstein's State Fair. While incredibly cheerful most of the time, Owl is best known for his mildly grumpy attitude. He strongly dislikes the springtime because animals tend to become twitterpated during that time of the year. Speaking of which, my favorite scene that Owl is involved with is when he tells Bambi and friends about what it's like to get Twitter pated. And in my opinion, some of his gestures and movements are pretty funny. 
Next, we have Bambi's father, the great prince of the forest, voiced by Fred Shields, who got to narrate in Saludos Amigos and the Three Caballeros. In this film, the great prince is shown to be a highly dignified stag. Plus, according to his wife, he's very brave and very wise. I really like the part where he warns the herd that man was approaching and helps his wife and son evacuate the meadow, including the part where he warns Bambi that man has returned to the forest, and the scene where he and Bambi race to the forest to escape the fire. However, there is one little flaw that I found about him. He doesn't seem to show too much emotion in his face nor does his mouth move when he speaks. Next we come to the beautiful Feline. As a fawn, she's voiced by Cammie King, best known from Gone with the Wind. She gives the impression of a mysterious, quiet, sweet, wild, giggly girl stealing too many kisses from Bambi when they first meet. As an adult, she's voiced by Anne Gillis, who might remember from 2001 A Space Odyssey. In my eyes, Feline is a beautiful doe. In fact, she's as beautiful as Zoe from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer the movie. Plus, she and Bambi make a sweet couple. However, in my opinion, the part where she runs off to find Bambi when Man returns to the forest was very irresponsible. I mean, if Bambi would have told Feline where he was going, or if he had brought her along with him, then things would have been okay. Finally, we have Rano who in this film has no voice actor, but in the midquel Bambi 2, he does have a voice actor. But for more details on this, I'll have to save that for Father's Day when I do a blog on it. Anyway, in this film, Rano is a real jerk of a buck. In the only scene that he's featured in, he challenges Bambi to a fight because he hates him and wants to mate with Feline. And, as I said before, his battle with Bambi is very intense, with green, orange, and lots and lots of black in the background, as well as the orchestra sounding very epic. But, I'm glad that Bambi won the fight by sending Rano over a cliff and into the water below. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Bambi is a very powerful and emotional movie from the House of Mouse. The animation and music are beautiful, the characters are fun and lovable, and the story is very tear-jerking. Plus, there are a few parts that are very intense, with Bambi fighting Rano, men attacking the forest, and the fiery climax. If you folks haven't seen this movie yet, do so. It's a Disney film that folks should watch at least once in their lives. It'll make you laugh, scream, even cry. And so, I give this movie a full 100%. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to go rabbit hunting. Mustang Power. <laughs>